Hi, we're the Rimples. I'm Jason, and this is Christy, and this is Avery, and Evan, and Kian. This is our farm, Rempel Co Acres. We're a mixed farming operation. We grow grain, and we raise hogs and goats. We are a third generation farm. We're located just east of New Bothwell, Manitoba. I grew up on this farm and I'm 45 years old, so you could say I've been farming for most of my life. Today we'll be learning about growing and harvesting wheat and what it can provide for you. This is the field that we planted the wheat in. So every fall, we have our fields soil sampled, which means we get somebody to come on with a machine and they'll stick a probe into the ground and take a core of soil and we'll send it off to the lab for analysis to have the, the nitrogen and phosphorus and potassium analyzed. So that happens after the crop has been harvested so that we know what levels of fertilizer to apply for next year's crop. Usually our fields are prepped after the snow has melted. This year it was a very, very snowy winter and a very wet spring and we can't seed wheat into waterlogged soil. It's too muddy and the tractors will get stuck and the seed won't go in. We did have to come in with a piece of equipment called a harrow which is essentially a very big comb, a metal comb with long metal fingers that scratches the soil to try and help smooth this out and stir up the soil a little bit on the top so things would dry out. Wheat is okay with being planted into cool soil, so it's one of the first crops that we'll plant in the growing season. And so as soon as the soil is dry enough, we're able to go in and seed it. We don't have to wait for things to, to warm up. In order to grow a good crop of wheat, you have to feed it with fertilizer. And we apply all of our nitrogen and phosphorus and potash at the time of seeding. Fertilizer will help the wheat grow big and strong and produce a lot of nice, healthy kernels. After we've seeded the wheat, we can expect to see sprouts showing as soon as six to seven days. Our ideal growing season has rain once a week, once every two weeks, lots of sunshine. And it's no accident that wheat is grown in Manitoba. We have a great climate for growing wheat. It's not too wet and it's not too hot and it's not too cold. After the wheat has sprouted and has put out a few flowers, we will come through with a pass of herbicide which is a chemical that will kill the plants that aren't wheat. And we do this so that the wheat doesn't have to try and outcompete the other plants that want to grow in the field. And later on in the growing season, we will have to also apply something called fungicide. Wheat is susceptible to various diseases that are brought on by fungus or, or molds, and we have to apply that fungicide to make sure that the wheat plant can actually finish its growing season and grow to maturity and fill this head with nice big fat kernels. If we don't apply fungicide and the wheat becomes diseased, these heads will be empty. So this is a nice healthy head of wheat. So the top part is the head. These are the kernels, the individual kernels from the wheat head. And if we separate some of the hull, we can see the individual kernels and that is what is actually ground up to make flour. The individual kernels in the head, right now I can squeeze them and moisture will actually come out. Now this is still quite a ways off from being ready to harvest, but it is starting to change color. You can see the beards drying off and browning and the rest of the kernels just starting to take a little bit of color. These kernels will continue to dry and ripen. We look for them to be too hard to squeeze and then I'll actually be ready to harvest. The ideal day for harvesting wheat is going to be a nice sunny dry day. Everything separates so much easier in the combine that way. This is my combine that we use to harvest the wheat. We call this a straight header because we can cut the wheat while it's still standing in the field and harvest it directly straight from the field into the combine. This is the reel, and this will spin to gather the wheat onto 
the cutting bar. These knife guards act as wedges to help direct the wheat over the cutting bar knives as it gets transferred into the header to go up into the combine. So after the wheat has been gathered onto the cutting bar and cut by the knives, it then goes up and meets what we call the feeder drum. And that is a rotating drum with metal fingers on it and to gather the wheat and direct it up into the combine. If you look up close at the drum, it actually looks like a big screw that as it's rotating, helps gather the wheat to the middle to help feed it efficiently into the combine. So after the wheat has been cut and gathered into the front of the feeder house drum, it will actually go up this inclined plane on the feeder house up into the combine where in this particular style of combine it will come up and be met by two large rotating rotors and it will be pushed against these wires and the idea is that the straw will remain behind but the wheat kernels and some of the wheat heads will probably get pushed against here and fall through and then it can go through the rest of the cleaning system. So the wheat will come through here and the straw and we come over these things that we call sieves and the straw and the chaff, those are the things that we don't want. Those will be separated and blown up and out the back of the combine, whereas the wheat seeds, the kernels, will fall down and be gathered up and brought up an elevator to be put into the hopper on the top of the combine, which is where all those kernels will be gathered until we have a full hopper so when the hopper is full or almost full and we're ready to empty it into a grain cart, then I will swing out this big black pipe, which is what we call an auger. And it's actually got a very long screw inside it. And so when I flip the switch inside the cab, the auger will swing out and the screw inside will start rotating and it'll bring the grain out and drop it into the, the grain cart or grain truck to be transported off the field and back to the farm. So after the wheat has been harvested and brought back to the farm, on our farm, because we're a mixed farm, we have our own feed mill, we do feed uh, a little bit of the wheat to some of our younger piglets for their feed rations. And then we also sell some of our wheat to mills uh, across the country. Mills use it for many different wheat-containing products, such as bread and bannock and pancakes, naan, and uh, in many of your breakfast cereals as well. Wheat provides us with carbohydrates for energy and protein to help us grow strong muscles and bones and has fiber to aid in digestion and has many other micronutrients. Did you know that one slice of bread can provide enough energy to play nine minutes of basketball? Well, that's pretty cool. Thanks for visiting us on our farm today. We hope you learned something new about wheat. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming, coming to our farm. farm.